Kanku village, home to 700 people, perches on the side of a mountain in Ethiopia. Surrounded by forest, far from the grid, villagers use the sun to provide light at night. Thanks to the Global Environment Facility, solar panels provide light while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I am very happy. I have five rooms, a bar, a shop and storage. I use a lot of electricity. Now I do not have to pay so much money every day to buy kerosene and I do not have to breathe the fumes anymore either. Business owners Alimahu and his wife benefit from the new lights. Their store and bar can stay open at night while their children study under energy-efficient bulbs and the news plays in the living room. Ethiopian authorities know they must fight the effects of climate change in their country and they welcome GEF's initiatives. Global Environment Facility support is absolutely indispensable for Ethiopia and I'm sure for many other countries. 7,000 kilometers east of Ethiopia, Senegal's coastline is eroding because of climate change. To reverse that, the GEF recently allocated $3 million for eco-village projects. We have many needs, particularly to fight erosion of coastal areas and bushfires, and to build retention basins. These are the three main environmental priorities for my department, for the government of Senegal. So we are very much counting on the GEF. Many African heads of state are committed to fighting the effects of climate change and are calling on the GEF for support. Africa contributes very little to global pollution, representing about 3.8% of the global CO2 pollution. But we are subject to much larger consequences, and among these consequences is the problem of desertification. So we have to be helped to solve this problem, because on the other hand, we are also asked to contribute with our forests, etc., to the protection of nature. Now is the time for large-scale projects, for more investment and greater effectiveness. Terra Africa, a GEF-financed project that restores degraded lands, is a perfect example. Aujourd'hui, en particulier, à travers le programme Terra Africa, Especially today with regional uh, programs uh, such as Terra Africa, which was initiated by the GEF, we have the only large program on sustainability in Africa, with an investment by the GEF of 150 million US dollars. Il est important aujourd'hui plus qu'hier today more importantly than ever it is crucial for Africa to define its two or three major priorities which depend on actively engaged partners such as the GEF who have to play the role that is expected from them if the continent achieves that the GEF can provide us with the expected results in Northern Africa, GEF is financing a huge project to protect the biological and cultural diversity of the Algerian Sahara. And Algiers is advocating for a financial policy for the entire continent. In that spirit, Algeria, its president and its government, Algeria, its president and government are convinced that the GEF, led by Monique Barbou, who introduced a new spirit with easier procedures and quicker results, offers a great opportunity to assure and improve the financing of sustainable development. At a recent meeting, African environment ministers supported a stronger GEF to tackle increasingly vast and complex challenges. We have to show strong support for the GEF and say that it is this very mechanism that we need to finance our project. Yes for the GEF, yes for the strengthening of the GEF, yes for the GEF as financial mechanism, and yes for an even more active cooperation. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. A stronger GEF is very important for my country, Benin, 
because here we can actually have the possibility to improve our performance in biodiversity, against climate change and in the fight against desertification. La gestion de la biodiversité, de la lutte contre les changements climatiques et aussi de la lutte contre la désertification. There are still challenges, among them how to finance the environmental sector. We feel there are not enough voices from developing countries that uh, could help in the uh, decision making such that we have uh, the real uh, flow of funds to those areas where we feel uh, we need to have activities. The projects themselves are not evenly spread across Africa. That those areas is in dire need, like Botswana, where the number of projects is not uh, a thing of, it's not encouraging. Looking ahead, Europe has raised the challenge of financing. The question is not at all to create other facilities or to even replace the GEF. The question is to reinforce the GEF, to reinforce the GEF, to reform it and strengthen it in order to be more powerful, to enlarge it about tenfold. That's what is needed approximately to make it more effective and efficient and to give it an international legal personality for it to be able to receive funds from many other sources as well. So the question is not the facility, the question is the financing. For now, the GEF is counting on reforms and the replenishment of funds to fulfill its commitments. If you face a global problem and climate change is a global problem, then you have to have a global strategy. But of course, it has to be adapted to each continent. In Africa alone, the GEF has committed more than $500 million for adaptation and mitigation. The FEM, or the GEF, as we call it in Angola, is very important for us, not only because of the financial resources, but also for the capacity building with the government. If the UN didn't exist, it would have had to be invented. The same applies to the GEF. If it didn't exist, it would have to be created because it is one of the major innovations that have come out of the Rio conference and because it is a unique instrument. So these children can grow up in a safe and livable environment, sustainable investments are needed. To help Africa provide that environment, the GEF needs the international community's strong support.